As believers, we can live victoriously over the flesh, the world and the devil. This sermon series is intended to show us how to live the overcoming victorious Christian life. In this message, we discuss how to use the word of God to live an overcoming victorious Christian life. All right, to lead us in our declaration this morning, Sushil Come on, Sushil, Sushil uh, Abraham will lead us in our declaration. He's one of our young leaders, so Sushil. Good morning, church. So today, even as we're just going to get ready to do our declaration, I just want to read a couple of verses from Psalms 27. So if you can just turn with me to Psalms 27, I'm going to read the first three verses. So, the Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I'm attacked, I will remain confident. So we see this is a Psalm of David and we understand what David is going through. And he's in the midst of like difficult situations and he recognizes there are enemies and adversaries and foes around him, right? So however, David declares that, David declares who God is to him. And he he declares that the Lord is his light. He is his salvation. And he says, why should I be afraid? Why should I tremble? And he declares and announces the defeat of his enemies because God was with him and God was for him. So in in every situation, we need to stand boldly in who God is to us. We need to declare that the Lord is our light. He is our salvation and that we don't have to be afraid, right? So in the midst of adversity, we can declare that the Lord is our deliverer. In the midst of sickness, we can declare that the Lord is our healer. And in the midst of hopeless situations, we can declare that the God God is our source of joy and our source of peace. And he will turn our mourning into dancing. So today, let's declare who God is. Let's, and, and all that he's given to us. And in every situation, declare your boldness, declare your confidence, the joy and the victory that you have only because of who God is. David did that and we can do that too. So today, can we just, I just want to request you all to just stand up to your feet. Just hold your Bible up and just declare this 2021 declaration loud, bold, and strong. So this is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything that God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I am a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word, I believe his word, and I live by his word. Christ is my master. And to him, I am in absolute surrender. I walk in the more glorious covenant with God. I live the more glorious life in the spirit. I manifest the more glorious ministry of the spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, church. Thank you, Sushil. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, the last few weeks, we've been doing a series on overcoming. We've been talking about living, how we live and overcoming victorious life over the flesh, the world, and the devil. And, and like we said in the very beginning, uh, we've divided this entire series into eight sermons and uh, different members of our team will come and minister to us. Uh, today is the third message in this series. And to lead us today, uh, Jean George will come and minister to us. Many of you know who Jean is. Uh, she's part of our team. She's also a psychologist, part of our uh, Chrysalis Counseling. And uh, she's a 
Wonderful teacher of God's word. So let's put our hands together and welcome Gene. Check. Good morning, church. It's wonderful to be here. Um, before we get started, um, uh, how many of us have come in here expectant today? Oh, the lights are too bright. Yes, and I wish I'd see more hands because we're going to see something wonderful happen today. We have a tool that we're talking about, the Word of God, okay? So we're all going to be expectant and we're going to leave here with uh, more testimonies. So to start, let me, uh, let me uh, share a couple of testimonies that have come over the past week. Uh, and, you know, let's thank God and all of us who have expectant hearts, I believe we'll receive today, okay, even as we hear, hear some testimonies. Um, so I have four testimonies that I'd like to quickly come through. This was received on January 14th. Um, and this person talks about a relative who was diagnosed with cancer a few years and who had underwent uh, multiple surgeries but had a lot of complications. Um, he talks of how this relative has been homebound and uh, the, her faith has been hit due to the sickness. Um, the week this testimony was written, this relative was very sick and was close to giving up because of the pain and the frustration of not being healed. This was when uh, one of the pastors had sent a message on a group writing about praise and worshiping God truly and what it meant to worship even when we don't see him work. This person uh, was stirred in faith and he goes to the relative's house and finds her lying in pain. And he just plays the song that was sung on a service, Where You Go, I Go. This relative in pain, engaged in worship, felt something strong move her and said it felt very powerful. Seeing her faith, uh, the, the, you know, this person re leaves the home and later that night, the relative sends a message saying, the pain just disappeared all of a sudden and I felt nothing ever happened and I'm completely healed of my pain. This was a situation that the doctors had given up on saying that she would need to live with the complications. So they uh, continue to pray and ask God for complete healing of, of all of the entire disease in itself. Amen. Okay. Yes, we can clap. All right. The second testimony, again, is a testimony of healing. Um, this person has been suffering with a nagging pain on the forearm uh, um, and left joint uh, for three weeks. Prayed for healing several times, but there wasn't much of an improvement. Uh, they attended the online service and was ministered to as pastor prayed for healing for those who had pain in the left arm. Uh, the person says, with half a mustard seed faith, I held my arm and listened to, to, to the prayer. I mean, even half a mustard seed is enough. So the, but the pain persisted even after prayer. But before he went to sleep, he felt his arm and noticed that the pain had completely vanished. The person has seen the miraculous healing in a very tangible way. Amen. <laughs> Wonderful. The next is a testimony of thanksgiving. This family sends a testimony of gratitude for the wedding of their daughter and the support of the team at APC. Uh, they appreciated the well-structured counseling and preparation the children went through and uh, have also said the marriage and family manual has been a great blessing. They are grateful to the Lord for building and establishing this new family according to God and his purposes. And they say they're very blessed and touched by the messages and the ability to view this from the comfort of the home. That's wonderful. And uh, our last testimony came in yesterday. Uh, this person shares uh, as how he had injured his hip sometime in November after a fall that he had been uh, and been in bed most of the time through December. Uh, the doctors had confirmed that the injury had caused sci a sciatic condition, which he had been previously healed from without a surgery, just by speaking the word. So he had been praying and declaring healing since then. And last Sunday at the service, um, being in pain, he was standing and worshiping and felt the presence of the Lord and was impressed in his heart that he would 
expectant. He would receive God's word for healing. It was at the ministry time pastor called out healing for those with back pains. He claimed the healing and it was only after a few days that he found no pain and there was no need to take medications and went about doing his work. The doctor also confirmed that the injury in itself, that, that no injury to the spine or to the hip was a miracle in itself. Amen. Amen. Let's just praise God and say, thank you, Lord. This is, these are things that's happening uh, among us, all right? And even as we hear the word today, um, I'm really expectant, you know, because as I said, it's God's word. And when God's word goes out, it will accomplish what it was sent forth for. So let's quickly, uh, a half a minute prayer, okay? Uh, Holy Spirit, Lord, we are speaking your word today, and we know that through your word comes your power and your glory, and we invite you in today as we, as we pick up on this tool of overcoming. Lord, come, come, come and do your work even as we speak your word. Thank you for honoring, Lord, our prayer and for being present here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Right, so quickly, maybe you could just turn around and uh, uh, high-flying hi-fi to some family next, you know, so they don't think that you're ignoring them. Great, okay. So we've been um, uh, learning about overcoming, okay? And uh, the last two weeks, we started two weeks ago, where we established this truth that every believer can live can live overcomers, can be overcomers or live victorious overcoming lives, which means you and I are not defeated believers. We're not out of the, out of the ring, the boxing ring. We are not defeated believers, okay? We are overcomers. Last week, we saw uh, the basis for living this overcoming life, which is what Jesus did on the cross and what he has given us as a result of what he's done on the cross. The life that he's given us, all, um, all because of the new life we have in Christ. So today, we will look at one of the most important tools we use to overcome the flesh, the world, and the devil. We're going to be looking at the tool. Now, if you are a handyman... Uh, you don't even have to be a handyman. If you are a skilled worker, if you don't go to your workshop with your tools, you are not an effective worker, right? So each of us have our tools. Our tools are, you know, scripture is so beautiful. The way that God talks about his word, he gives us mind pictures. He says God's word is like a hammer, it's like a sword, it's like fire, it's like water, Right? Now, God's, and we all have that in this one thing. You don't have to take different tools. You just have this one tool. So God gives us this tool to overcome, to live this overcoming life. And God has made this available to us. He's given it to us. He's instructed us to use it. Okay? And he says that that's what's going to help you. Now, Scripture uh, talks about the word of God so beautifully. It says um, uh, in Proverbs 4.20, I'll, I'll just give you a gist of what it says. But it says, uh, you know, give attention to the word of God. You have to use your mind. Incline your ear to the sayings. You have to use your ears. You know, keep it in the midst of your heart. You've got to lodge it there. And it says, uh, keep attention, give attention to the word of God with your eyes. Because the word is life to all who seek it and flesh to, to your bones. So scripture in all of its entirety is a powerful tool for us to live this overcoming life. Amen? And we are going to move, dwell right in to understand. Now this is a very simple message and I'm sure if we've been in church for many years, we've heard this over and over again. But this, this never runs dry. This is, a, this is a word that never, never runs dry. So we overcome with the, with the words. So let's look at our first scripture, 1 John 2 verse 14. 1 John 2 verse 14. 
It says, I have written to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. So the apostle John here is addressing different people in different stages of spiritual maturity. Okay, and he says the fathers in the faith have known Jesus who was from the beginning and he kind of tells them, you know, keep growing, keep growing in the knowledge of the Lord. He talks to the young people or the young men or young, the young who is still in the faith, who are still growing, who are still maturing. This is what he says. He says, um, he points out that they have overcome the wicked one. They have overcome the wicked one and they are strong. So what is it that gives them the strength? It says, the word of God that abides in you. You are strong and the word of God abides in you and you overcome the wicked one. So he say, he's telling those young in their faith or in their spiritual maturity, you know, keep growing, keep maturing. You will overcome. You are strong in the word. You have the scripture. You, you, that's what's going to help you battle over different things that come on to you. So it's, it's a kind of an instruction that says the fact that the word of God abides in you is the reason why you are strong. So do all of us want to be strong apart from the gym today? Yes. Okay, so this is what you and I are going to say. Okay, so I'd like you to repeat this after me. My strength, louder, strength is powerful. My strength to overcome the evil one comes from abiding in God's word. Once again, my strength to overcome the evil one comes from abiding in God's word. Okay, so it says to overcome, we have to abide. We are to abide, not just know that it exists. You know, there's a difference. What is abide? The word of God abiding in us implies that it takes residence. It's something permanent. You know, when you go stay in a hotel, it's not permanent. It's temporary. You're there for a while, and then you come back to your home base. The same way, abiding means to stay and to remain, which is not, it doesn't have an end. It goes on and on and on and on, right? So abiding is to stay and to remain. We see over, Scripture talks about the Word of God being alive. It talk, talks about Word of God being living and active. The word of God is alive, living, and active, and that's what influences every area of our lives. The word of God is active, living, and alive, and it influences every area of our lives. So, which means when we look if we want to overcome, we abide in God's word. Whatever your situations may be today, we are helping ourselves to understand that I have to abide, I have to come back to the word of God in order to overcome. Okay, so your strength today, your strength to overcome will come only when we abide. So the key is to have the word of God alive and active in us. It has to be bubbling in us. It can't be dormant. It can't be asleep. It can't, uh, it can't be scratched to wake up. It has to be active. I don't know if you're a light sleeper, but I am. With, a, with, a, with just a pin sound, I'm up. Okay? And that's the kind of thing that I, I see, that whenever there is something going on, the word of God has to come up, has to be pulled up. Okay? Now, how do we do this? Today, we'll share very three simple practices to, um, to overcome with the word as we go in through our, our journey. So the first one is to feed your inner person with the word. To feed your inner person with the word. So as believers, we all need to understand that nothing can take the place of us reading and meditating on God's word on your own. You cannot like, for example, those of you who had breakfast this morning, all because you fed your family does not keep your stomach full. 
although mothers say that for some reason, right? But until and unless you consume, you're not going to have strength or energy. You need to be in a place to read or to feed yourself the word, okay? So if you want to grow, you need to feed. You want to grow spiritually, you need to feed in the word of God. Some of the problems that, you know, sometimes we all go through is because of something called a spiritual malnourishment. Malnourishment. Malnutrition, sorry. I'm sorry. It's spiritual malnutrition, right? You know, you know when your kids don't eat, you say you don't eat your vegetables, you will, vitamins are gone, right? So the problems that we have is because we, we are malnourished. And the, uh, the fact is that, you know, we take so much of time to spend three hot meals to feed our bodies. But when it comes to our spirit, we have two cold, you know, dry things to feed ourselves. And we say we are weak or we do not overcome. We need to feed ourselves, okay? So uh, how? Let's, let's just look at a couple of scriptures. It says one, in 1 Peter 2, 2, it says, As newborn babies desire the pure milk of the world, that you may grow thereby. So if you feed, you will grow. Okay, it's a very simple principle and said, said so in, in, in this verse and the verse after. Acts 20, 32. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. So when you feed yourself, you not only are strengthened and nourish, but you also walk in what has given as his inheritance to all those who believe in him. So when you feed, you grow, as well as you have everything that the Lord has given to you. So that's important for us to be strong. And in order to be strong, we need to feed ourselves. So let's give that attention to the word of God, because only from there comes our spiritual strength. There is a book called The Spiritual Disciplines of the Christian Life, and the author talks about five ways to feed, okay? Very simple, and which we all know. Hear it, hear the word, read the word, study the word, meditate the word, memorize the word. So shall we say it again? How do we feed? Hear, read, study, Meditate, memorize, okay? Now, uh, I think as a church, we have so many resources. It's almost, you know, really pureed for us and given. You just have to open your app and just read and just read it. That's all. You don't even have to Google search and say, How, what do I find for this? So, you know, we have so much of resources and uh, make it a practice to read the word regularly to read it little by little, chapter by chapter, every day, not just reading, but meditating on it and finding out how, that, how, the, how are the ways that you can apply God's word into your life. So take that time, you know, every morning, it could be a, a book that you take, it could be a daily devotional, it could be the sermons, take that time to feed yourself in the word. Okay, and feed good things. There's, there's a difference between feeding healthy and feeding junk, right? So the next time you open your phone to feed yourself with some YouTube video, remember, junk. Okay, a YouTube video that is not related is junk. But let me, uh, let me feed healthy, that's going to build me up. Okay, so the first practice is... I said so much about food. Feed, feed, okay? The first practice is we feed ourselves with God's word. The next is to renew our minds with the word. Renew our minds with the word. You know, when you constantly feed yourself, you will begin to change, right? If you eat too much of food, you will grow sideways, right? But this is a good thing in the spiritual world. When you feed yourself, it will begin to change you. It will begin to change your thoughts, 
your ideas, your lifestyle, it will begin to renew you. So the more you feed, the more the, the renovation takes place, the regeneration takes place. So the word renew is equivalent to thinking in ways that align to God's ways and thoughts. So when you feed healthy, you will begin to renew healthy. So when you feed God's word, you will begin to align yourself in God's ways and God's thoughts. The term um, uh, renew means to cause something to become new and different. Renew, something to become new and different. And we are called in scripture, I mean, this I know all of us will be able to recite. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by transformed um, by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So when you feed, your mind will be renewed, your wrong thoughts, patterns will begin to change, your wrong ideas and beliefs will be dislodged, you will begin to conform to God and keep away that which conforms to the world. And you will begin to see your life changing, transforming. So we are called to renew and it is a process. It's a process, it doesn't happen in a day. It is a process by which you do it over and over again to be more Christ-like. So how do we renew our minds? Um, so I, I've, I've just, I just kind of you know, thought it's important for us to know how do I renew my mind? So if you look at one of the verses, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, you can probably look at that later. The first thing that you need to note, you need to identify that there are certain imaginations, strongholds, accusations, uh, negative thoughts that's lodged in you. Identify it. And then you cast it off. You cast it. And then is to bring it into captivity and make it in alignment with God. So you identify it, know that it's there, cast it out, and bring it in alignment with God's word. So I think I, you know, just to give you an understanding, I'd like to share something that, that I did a couple of years ago. So in 2011, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder. And uh, uh, this came as a huge surprise. And when, we, when I went to the doctor, this is what she said. She said, you know, you cannot go out in the sun. You cannot be exposed to the sun. Now, 2011, I was a younger mother, okay, and my children needed to go to the park. I had to take them to school, and all this is in Bangalore sun. And I said, Lord, this is just not practical. You know, I cannot not go out in the sun. So if I had to go out in the sun, which I did for a couple of months after she told me, is that I would cover myself like an Eskimo. You just see my eyes. The rest of my entire body was covered. And it went on for some time because that's an advice that you think you should follow. And it is good to follow. Please don't get me wrong. Whatever the doctors do advise you, you know, do it. But I began to battle with the Lord. I said, God, I need, I need a respite of this. What do I do? So I looked scripture, okay? And this is a verse that I found. It says, uh, it's in Psalm 121. It says, the sun will not harm you by day. So every time I walked out, I'd say the sun will not harm me by day. The sun will not harm. I mean, I would know that each time I was out in the sun, I'd have lesions and I would know that, you know, it's a direct relation to the sun. So it took me months and I kept saying it. Sun will not harm me by day. Sun will not harm me by day. And there came a time, and which is today, that I don't go out with being... Uh, um, covered completely. I take precautions, yes, but I take care, I do not cover myself. And every time I go out, I would say this. I say, the sun does not harm me by day. So you've got to identify what are the lies that, you know, you've been told, okay, that wasn't a lie, I mean, that, that is scientific. What I mean is, you know, you're, you're told, okay, you can't do anything anymore. And then you have to identify it, cast it, and speak your scripture. Bring that into captivity with what God's word says. Over the last couple of, um, especially after the pandemic, you know, as I've spoken to people, I've found two things that have really, um, this pandemic has really uh, taken off from people. One is their sleep, and the other is their anxiety. Okay? And... Um, 
this is something that I have actually ask them to go and, you know, identify that, uh, you know, when, when you're going to sleep, there are so many racing thoughts that you're not able to just rest and go down to sleep, okay? So these are, if, if you are any one of them, if you're sitting in this room, you know, scripture talks about it, how God is so mindful. He says in Psalm 4, 8, he says, I will both lie down in peace and sleep. So if you have anxiety, it says you will lie down in peace as well as sleep. For you alone, O Lord, can keep me safe. Or it says in uh, uh, Psalm 324, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. So if you are someone who's being sleepless, renew your mind. Learn the scripture and talk about it. Say it, I will lie down in peace and sleep. Because you alone, O oh Lord, keep me safe. Because the more that you renew your mind, the more that you are going to change. Not just in your mind, but it is going to manifest. It has to manifest. Okay, it's like yeast in a, in a batter. It will go and it will manifest. So do it. Keep renewing your mind. So what are our first practices? The first is feed. Second Renew. Okay. We go to the last, um, uh, the last practice that we need to do is to speak. To speak the word of God. Now God instructs us to speak the word. You know what God has likened the word of God to? In Ephesians 6, 17, it says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. What does the sword indicate? It indicates a weapon. It indicates a weapon. Now you have a weapon for two reasons. So like a Roman soldier, now this was in that time, I know we may not have like swords at this time, but you know, and, and that culture, the Romans used to have weapons and swords were one of their greatest weapons. And they would use it as an offensive weapon against their enemies. So the sword not only acts as an offensive weapon, it also acts as a defensive weapon, right? So um, even, even as, you know, when you speak the word, you know that the word can protect you, but it can also counterattack. It's a double-edged sword, it does both. It can protect you, and it also can counter attack whatever is coming in your way now we see that jesus our biggest example he used the word of god in a lot um, you know look at scripture and you will find many examples of how he used that as an offensive weapon the first and foremost we we all know this is how he demonstrated this um, when he was being tempted in the wilderness in matthew 4 and he uses the word and he says, every time Satan comes in and tempts him, he says, it is, it is written. So he speaks the word against Satan. He says, it is written. There was an attack. He said, no, you know, this is my shield. He spoke the word. Okay, and that's the same weapon that you and I have today in order to overcome every issue that we have. Let's look at some more examples of what Jesus did. There was another occasion where, um, you know, this is again in Matthew, when, you know, the religious leaders were very angry with Jesus, you know, as he was going on a donkey, and the children all were crying, Hosanna to God in the highest. They were, they didn't like what they heard. And you know what, how Jesus responds? He says, Do, uh, he says, have you never read? Didn't you read it? Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise. Didn't you read that? That's what's happening. Okay, so he uses the word. Another point is when the Sadducees posed to him a situation about the resurrection. Right? They tried to trap him to get into an argument with him. And he responded, your mistake is not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. And said, have you not read what was spoken to you by God? 
So today, when we are to be speaking the word, you need to ask yourself, have I not read this somewhere? Because Jesus used the word of God as a weapon. So just like that, we, in every situation, whatever our situations may be today, you know, it sometimes seems so simple, but the fact is it has immense power. It has immense power over the enemy. It has immense power over our fleshly desires or our lusts, and it has immense power over the things of the world. So when we have this, let's speak it. Maybe I'll just, you know, some examples of the spoken word of faith that needs to come from a faithful heart. So let's say, you know, you're afraid of the devil. You're just going around feeling afraid of the devil. This is what you need to speak. Bring it out. Bring those words out of your mouth. Okay, it says speak the word because there's power in, in your tongue. It, it has life. So you say, I'm not going to go around being afraid of you, devil, because Jesus has given me authority to overcome the powers of the enemy. Amen. So speak that word. Let's say you have, this, this is a common one. We keep saying this week after week. If you have a disease or if you have something that you're ailing with, you know, speak it and say, you know, this has no, no uh, root in me. This has no power in me because I am, uh, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. I am healed. If, let's say you, you're in a place, you, you fear an untimely death. You fear that, Okay. This is what God's word says. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. So every time that thought comes, bring it out and say, I will not die but I will live. And I will be there to declare the works of God. Or if you're going to a struggle through some uh, provision in your life or there are financial issues in your life. Say, God, you will meet my needs. You will meet my needs according to your glorious riches. Speak the word. Come and speak the word. What are you doing when you speak the word? You are putting your faith in God and in his word. Not in your abilities or not in your, uh, you know, not in, in, in the way that it is done. You're putting your faith in God and in, in his, his, putting your faith in God and in his word. You are reminding yourself. You're telling yourself, you know, this is not that. This should be what the word of God says. You remind yourself of what the word of God, God says. And when you speak God's word, you take a stand against the enemy. You know, God, the enemy does not like it when you show up with God. He doesn't like it. He tries his best to dampen you. How do you dampen a fire? You know, you throw water. That's exactly what he does. He tries to put all these thoughts back to you. But, but, no, if, but. But when you speak the word of God, you know, he's dampened. He, he, the word of God is fire. You know, it is, he is dampened. So take the authority that God has given you. Fill your heart with these truths that you've heard today. We overcome because of the word. You and I overcome because of the word. And we, so what do we do? We, what is the first thing we do? We feed. So let's make it a point to eat healthy. Eat regularly, okay? The second we do is renew. The more you feed, the more you'll change. And the third is to speak the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. May I please call on the uh, worship team. So even as we are going to spend, take some time to minister, this is something that, um, you know, for you to know, when God gave these word pictures about his word, it is to mean something. These were symbols of God's word. You know, you know as I was mentioning earlier, God's word is the sword. You know, there is utility in the sword. God's word is fire. God's word is light that exposes. God's word is a lamp. So when we just take to understand that no matter what we, you and I are going through, wherever our situation is, whatever it is, God's word has an answer. And it, if we don't take it, 
if we don't assume it, if we don't feed, we don't renew, if we don't speak, it will stay there. It will not pop, into, pop out from there into you. So we have that responsibility. God has given you that power to do that. Okay? So even as we get into a time of ministry, and I'd like to call Pastor um, Bini and Selina. Okay. All right. So if, um, even as we get to minister, right, whatever, um, bring whatever you have right here in front of God and say, God, it's with your word that I'm going to overcome. It's with your word that I will see a manifestation of your glory over here because his word has life, his word has power. So are we ready to do that? Yes. So may I please request all of us to stand. All of us may we stand. And um, even as maybe the worship team can lead us in, in, a, in a worship song. And let's take some time to uh, invite the Holy Spirit here. And say, Lord, we are expectant because your word is powerful. And as we speak your word into our lives or as we hear... Um, you know, our team ministering to you, appropriate it, appropriate it, and see the manifestation of God. I'm alive, I walk in your counsel. release a word of restoration if there's anyone who's feels like they've lost uh, in your relationships and your inheritance um, just want to speak uh, uh, this word of restoration over you uh, Isaiah 61 7 Instead of your shame, there shall be a double portion. Instead of dishonor, they shall, you shall rejoice in your Lord. Therefore, in the land, you shall 
possess a double portion and you will have everlasting joy I just want to release this word over you in the name of the Lord Father I thank you that Lord you are the one who restores you are the one who 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 renews oh Lord Lord right now we declare by your word oh God that people who have who who've lost on on relationships people who have lost probably on their inheritance lord people who have lost in life oh god lord we want to speak a word of restoration over them lord we declare that a double portion be restored to them oh god we declare a renewing of their joy a renewing of their everlasting joy oh god we thank you for this in jesus name amen uh I'm just impressed in my heart especially for those parents who have children who are you know like the prodigal away from faith away from what you believe in the things of God um this this verse um you know I'm I just want to release this verse it's in Psalm 144 verse 12 it says your sons will be like plants grown up in their youth it says your sons will be like well nurtured plants that's going to bear fruit and your daughters uh, will be as pillars sculptured in palace style so th- so even as you are waiting at a at a time of waiting for your children to come back or to to know god his scripture is clear he's declared this over your son saying they are well nurtured plants and your daughters are like pillars that will adorn a palace in thessalonians somewhere it even talks about how your sons are as light your sons are as day and they do not have anything to do with darkness so no matter where your children are at this point of time declare this they are sons of light they are sons of the day they are children of light and there is no darkness in them so let's just receive that word just let's just uh, for maybe for those who are watching or anyone here let's just receive that word father we bring before you lord uh, the, these children that you've given to us who are a gift and an inheritance to us father Lord your word says that they will be like well nurtured plants they're not going to be feeble wilted withdrawn dead they will be like well nurtured plants God we speak that into their lives wherever they may be Lord we speak for our daughters Lord that they will be like pillars that adorn a palace Lord they will be children of the light children of day and there's no darkness no night in them Lord we bring them back God to their father's home where where you as a father stand in open arms Lord to receive them in love father thank you because you have spoken Lord Lord I release this word even Lord as people come to you in you know I am I'm I'm just seeing pictures of mums crying crying weeping for the lives of their sons and daughters be encouraged scripture can is not a lie god is not a liar what he speaks he will bring to accomplishment speak this word thank you jesus we receive this lord in jesus name amen 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 thank you thank you lord all right we're going to i just want to do something i, I know you know we are supposed to have physical distancing and all that uh but keeping physical dis- distancing i just want us to uh just pray over uh pray over uh those who are in school and college right this is to reopen uh, so if you're here and you're in school or college i want to ask you to come forward okay this is an altar call <laughs> if you're in school or college i want you to come forward uh you can keep some distance between yourself all right so don't say like okay i went to church and they broke all the rules and all that <laughs> but just keep a little distance come if you're in school or college we're going to just pray for you i know that 2019 2020 has been quite a disruptive year for those in school and college but today i just feel the lord is uh, wanting to speak over your life uh, uh, speak over your future speak over your destiny that none of these things will affect uh, and uh, and not just 
right? So, uh, you know, in whatever way you can, try to keep a little distance and stuff like that, okay? Uh, if you can keep something, if you want to go in the aisle as well. Now, uh, the church, we're going to pray. This is a future. Uh, if you guys want to come in the in aisle here also, you could do that, all right? Um, uh, we want to prophesy. We want to speak over their lives, okay? And we're going to call for destiny over their lives. God wants to do something powerful for them, in them, that nothing that God has ordained for their lives will in any way be defeated. Shall we do that? Okay, let's do that, right? Uh, these are young people. Some of them are in school. Some of them are in college. And uh, we are releasing God's hand over their lives. God, that these young people, they will fulfill destiny. That nothing that has taken place, you know, there's been so much of disruption. Uh, so much of disruption in their academics and in and, and, and the way things are done. But nothing will disrupt the call, the plan, the destiny that God has for their lives. Nothing will disrupt. So let's just pray. Everybody pray. Young, young people, you pray. Father, we pray over these young people who are in school and college. And Father, we declare over their lives, we declare over their lives the fulfillment of the great purpose of God over their lives. Today they are standing here because God, we call them out to speak over their lives, to speak over their destinies. That the hand of God will be upon them. That the Holy Spirit will be upon them. That the blessing of God will be upon them. That the favor of God will be upon them. That God in everything they do, they will see the success that comes from God. They will see the blessing of God. And Father, that they will see the hand of God setting things in motion, taking them into the fullness of your plan, your purpose that you have for their lives. That nothing will disrupt, nothing will dislocate, nothing will cause them in any way to deviate from the best that you have for their lives. I declare that each one of them, in the name of Jesus, Amen. that each one of them will rise yes. to the full potential that God has placed yes. in their lives. That each one of them will rise up into the destiny yes. that God has called them to. That every gift, every every design God has placed in them will come into their fullness and they will have impact. They will have influence in their generation for the kingdom of God. And Father, for those who, who need provision into their lives, in order to, to see all of these things come to, come to pass, Lord, that, that supernaturally there will be provision coming in. Money will come in to pay for their tuition fees. Money will come in to take care of the rest of their academic journey. That they will have no fear. That they will have no worry. Where will money come from? But God, you will provide for their household. For them and their household. That you will provide for them. And we thank you, oh God. We declare this over their lives. And we declare them blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're proud of you guys. You are the future. And you are going to make a big difference Amen. for the Amen. kingdom of God. Amen. You're, going to be, you're not excited? And I can't see you. I've got your masks on. I can't see things. Okay. God bless you. You can go back to your seats. Thank you for just coming up forward. You know, God, that word spoken over your life will take effect. It will have impact over each of your lives. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, God. Thank you. And we bless you, Father. These people are our future. The future of the church. They're the future of the nation. And God's good hand is on them. God's good hand is on them. And nothing will disrupt. Nothing will destroy. Nothing will disturb the purpose of God for their lives. They will fulfill it. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Jim, do you want to do something more? Um, I was just impressed in one, one more thing. Um, 
someone who's going through dialysis, kidney dialysis. Yeah. You know, naturally we understand that dialysis can be a very drawn off thing. And uh, this must be years that you're going through this, but you know, I'm just, uh, just the word of God just encourages, do not fear, I am with you. I will show you a way. I will give you the grace. I will hold you, uphold you with your right hand. Keep seeking me, just seek me. And in that grace, you will find healing. So that just impressed me. I'm just releasing that. Uh, let's just take, just come together and uh, let's just worship and just thank God as um, uh, maybe before uh, was anybody ministered through what was released um, as we spoke. Anyone? If so, thank you. Let, let's just give God a, a, a praise and worship. Anyone else? If there's anyone, there's somebody at the back as well. But let's just praise God because His Word, when He releases His Word, we know that it, it will accomplish what it was sent for. Let's just close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you. We came expectant and we are not leaving short of anything, Father because you have filled us with hope, with encouragement, with strength, Lord. Lord, we just release your spoken word over people, Father. Lord, we pray that each of us in our situations will be overcomers. Lord, we are not defeated. We are not down and hit and broken. But Lord, we are victorious and triumphant in you, Father. And we take your word every day, Lord. We ask for the power of your spirit to continue to help us renew your word in our lives. Speak your word till we see the manifestation of that promise, Father. God, help us through this, Father. Lord, we thank you for each one of us here, for those of us who have been ministered to, for those of us who are still waiting. Father, come through, Lord Jesus. Come through with the power of your word. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I also just want to take this time to give uh, y'all an opportunity. If anyone who would like to accept the Lord Jesus as your Savior, and you haven't done this before, and you may not know how, you know, you've heard of it, but you don't know how. There are simple things. The first thing is just to know and identify that you are a sinner, that we have all sinned. The Bible says we have all sinned and fall, fallen short of the glory of God. So just know and acknowledge, Lord, yes, I am a sinner. I have been far away from your ways. Acknowledge. And then is to believe and know that Jesus who we talk about is the one who's taken away each one of your sins each one of the shortcomings whatever we've done in our lives he's taken it away so that you and I can have freedom and take this time to just confess and say Lord I can't do without you you know it's true I can't do without you I need you to save me here and into eternity and make that decision make that decision to say Lord I receive you so I'm just going to lead you to, uh, in a prayer. And if, the God, if, if God is tugging your heart, say this prayer alongside with me. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I acknowledge I have been far away from your standards, far away from what you want me to be. I acknowledge and call myself a sinner. Lord, your word promises that when we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord, Lord, we are saved. And this is what I do right now. I confess my sin to you. I say that I need you as my savior. 
to live in me, to cleanse me, to give me the freedom that only you can give. Come into my heart, into my life. Thank you for doing this for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Is there anyone here who has said this prayer with me? Uh, we would be really glad and would like to rejoice with you. If you have, if you can just raise your hands up. It's just to, you know, just to worship and praise God for what he's done. Is there anyone who said the salvation prayer? All right, I don't see any hands, but if there is anyone and you may be embarrassed to, or if it's someone on the live chat, please do put in your name or you could meet with one of us after the service um, and, or, or at the live chat, put in your name and someone would get in touch with you and help you on how you could continue your journey with God. Amen. Shall we close with, with a benediction? Heavenly Father, we love your word. Lord, we love you. Lord, we come in power and in authority of your word and, and just of what you did on the cross. Lord, and we speak this over us, Father. May the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, publications, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College. Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play stores.